Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to make a basic player map or mini map for your game project in Game Maker Studio 2. Later in the video I'll also be showing you how to create some more advanced features like you can see in my own game project here, like smooth dragging and zoom functionality. Alright, let's get to it. I've created a simple demo project for the purpose of this video. Here you can see a world map populated with various objects that we want to show up on our player's map. In the Objects tab, you can see that I've already created a UI object for this project. For this video, I'm going to assume you already have a basic set of objects created for your project and a similar UI controller object. If not, simply make a new object for this purpose and we can proceed. First, in our create event, we're going to make a few variables. So write show map equals false. This is going to toggle the map. Also, create a new key press event for toggling this variable. I have it assigned to the tab key, but you can make one for the M key as well. Then write show map, and this will toggle the map. Now, to the create event. The selection, this will be used to select object in the game. The map divider, this is our zoom level. The mouse x GUI, this variable will come in handy later, but I will be expanding on that a bit. Then there are the surface variables. We will be drawing to a surface the size of the map that we want to draw. So make sure you enter the correct size for your project here. I'm using the height of the window as the height and width for the surface, but you can change this to be any size you need. The surface margin variable makes sure that you get the correct position for drawing the surface onto the screen by subtracting half the surface width from half the screen's width, placing it squarely in the center. The map x and y variables will be used for getting the relative position on the surface to which all other objects will be drawn. And finally, we create our surface and store its ID in the map surface variable. For dragging our map, we'll set dragging to false and create drag and drag offset variables. We'll get to the dragging bit later. So now that we're finished with the create event, let's move on to the draw GUI event. If you don't have one, create it. Here we will be drawing all of our objects to the map. First, write if show map, so the code only runs when the map is active. Then set the map surface as the surface to draw to. Draw a solid colored background, dark gray or black usually works best. Now here is where you draw a grid to the background if that's applicable to your game. Then write the following code, surface reset target. Since we're working with surfaces that can destroy themselves at any time, it's important to make sure they come back when they disappear. In the begin step event, add this code, and in order to prevent a memory leak, it is always recommended to free a surface after you stop using it. So create a destroy event and add this piece of code. Now, back to the GUI event. For the map UI, you can darken the area around the map like this, if that's applicable to your project. Here you set the color and the transparency, and you draw a rectangle. Then draw the map surface with the surface margin variables to place it squarely in the center of your screen. This should give you the basic map and grid to start drawing your objects onto. So now we get to the fun part. Let's go back up a bit. After we draw the grid sprite, we can start drawing the objects. For this, we're going to need a simple script. To do this, right click scripts in the resource tree and select create script and let's name it draw map object. Now, go back to the draw GUI event. I gave this script three variables, one for the object, one for the color, and one for enabling an optional direction indicator. Create one script for each object you want to be drawn to your map. Enter the object name for each script, and similarly write true or false for each object, whether you want it to show a direction indicator or not. Middle click one of the scripts to open it. Now, write with argument zero. This will let us grab the necessary variables from the target object. And now for some math. Let's make a local x and y variable for the position of this object. 
take the objects x and y coordinates and divide them by the map divider variable that we created earlier. This scales those numbers down so that they draw in the right place on the map. Add the x and y variables onto that. This will allow us to move and control where all the objects are drawn on the map. It's essential for the dragon functionality we'll make later. Since we're in a with statement, and this code runs as if it would with the target object, don't forget to write the UI object's name in front of the variables that you need from the UI object. Other also works as a keyword here if you're not planning to use this script in any other object. Now, let's also ground the correct mouse position for selecting the objects on the map. Since this is drawn to a surface, we need to get the mouse position on the surface rather than on the GUI. So let's subtract the place where we drew the surface earlier from the mouse position. By the way, the reason why this is a variable and not the device mouse x to GUI function is because we'll be putting that in a step event later and that will update this variable. I do this because I prefer not to run the same function more than once. Now, let's create a local variable for the object sprite on the map. Put your own sprite here. A simple sprite, no larger than 16 times 16, works best. And the next two variables are what we use to check if we clicked on the object. Here, I use the sprite width for the radius, but you might find a smaller or larger radius works better for you. We finish this script by drawing a dot a target marker and a direction indicator sprite. Use the local x and y variables that we created earlier and use the color argument for the color. Okay, now we can run this little project and see what we got. As you can see, there are some objects in the corner, but the player is nowhere to be seen. That's because right now everything is being drawn to the surface, scaled down, but to its location in the room, only on the surface. Let's change that. Let's make it so that everything is drawn relative to the player's location and that the map centers in on the player. For this, we'll need some extra math. Let's make a step event. Remember the map x and y variables that we referenced in the script? Well, that's where the magic is going to happen. First write show map equals true. This makes sure that this code doesn't run unless we're actually showing the map. Now write map x equals surface width divided by two in closed brackets minus player dot x divided by map divider in closed brackets. Now let's try this code. Run the program. And now you can see everything's drawn with the correct offset with a player in the center. You can also click on the selected objects. But what if we want to pan the map, like drag it around a bit? Okay, so again, let's go back to that step event and add a bit more code. Write if dragging equals false and mouse check button and be left. This checks if we're not dragging, but just held down the mouse. And then there's the drag x equals a drag offset x plus mouse x GUI. This gives us the distance between the mouse position and the drag offset variables. Then let's use those variables to update the drag offset variables. And this is what we will use to subtract from the map X. Make sure that this is updated only when dragging is set to true. Now we check if the mouse is released while dragging, and if so, set dragging to false. Finally, subtract the drag offset to the map X variable at the end. Now let's run and see how it goes. As you can see, it now drags perfectly. Now, for some extra functionality, create a global write pressed event. Write selection equals no one. This will let you deselect the map. Now, create a global middle pressed event and write the following. This resets the drag offset variables. And that concludes the first part of this tutorial. If you're interested in smooth dragging and zoom functionality, stick around. For this, let's return to the create event and make a few more variables. The drag move x and map max zoom variables. 
You may want to play around with the max zoom variable after this tutorial is finished because this controls the max zoom level for your map and this really depends a lot on the size of your map and the size of your sprites. So you might want to play around a bit with that. Now, let's go to this step event. Here we create another few local variables for the drag offset position, distance between the old position and the new position, and the direction in which we want to move the new variables. Now for a bit of math. So here we use the handy length, dear x and y functions to get to the next step in the direction of our target position. And finally, we change the offset variable at the end of the move x calculation to our new drag move variables. For the zoom functions, we'll write the next bit of code. This checks if the zoom level is less than max zoom and then adds to the map divider variable. We multiply this value by the map divider as well in order to get a consistent level of zooming the further we zoom out. Similarly, we do the same for zooming in only by subtracting. And there we are. There you can see it smoothly drags around the screen and it zooms like it should. This is the same code that I used in my game that I'm showing right now. It's a crazy space fantasy game about being a space captain in space. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and do check out Hyperventilar, wishlist on Steam, follow on social media, and I also have a Patreon. You can find the links to all of these in the video description below. Until next time.